So let's open the Board of Health meeting at 7.02 p.m. We don't have anyone here, <laughs> so uh, we can go to, I guess, the chair report. Um, ugh, what do I have? Um, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I wanted to thank both Laura and Jean and um, other town officials who helped out with the boil water order. Um, <laughs> I know the timing was inconvenient, <laughs> um, uh, but it seems like everything went smoothly. Yeah, that went so, really well. So, thank you. Um, and then the only other thing I wanted uh, to say was that um, at the, I wanted to remind everyone that at the next meeting I wanted to do sort of a goals oriented meeting where we talk about things we might want to accomplish next year um, and so in particular I wanted people to review the strategic plan and the voluntary national food regulatory no voluntary national food retail program standards what it is um, and then for Laura I guess any trainings or certifications that you may think you might you or other staff members might have on deck um, any thing any change the food code changes um, or the, I know there's like the electronic inspection system might be on the horizon. I don't know where that is on the on horizon. The horizon. <laughs> but, yeah. So the, those sorts of things. Um, so that's all I have for that. Uh, health agent report. So in month one, we have the thirty-one inspections, nine reinspections, five complaints. All five complaints have been corrected, none are pending. No animal inspections, but we do start um, animal inspections in December. So okay. I'll those this month. Okay. Hopefully before it starts snowing. <laughs> um, there was no septic abandonment. I listed up the fluke um, mm -hmm. clinics that we held, but we have not um, counted the total, so right. hopefully I'll get your total okay. next month. Cool. Uh, for Maven reports, we had Campylobacterius, mm -hmm. one case. Uh, group A strep throat, one. And one E. coli. And you had mentioned training, so you wanted to talk about the future, so since I went, I added oh, that, yeah. uh, that I attended the MHOA annual conference. Oh, very good. Is it interesting? It is. You yeah. Know, the, the normal stuff, the keeping up with like different food changes. Yeah. Or health organization yeah. association, something. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can look at it. Offices. Oh, offices. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Um, oh, I had, I should have talked to you about this earlier today. But um, I had some just sort of general questions about the inspection reports, mostly just from the last month. Um, the legibility on the carbon copies, has anyone else been having a hard time? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Is there a way? Do you want us to go with the whites? The whites easier? The whites, the whites are, are easier, but I then... The I... the the oh, okay. 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 Yeah, I did. I found whites a lot easier. Whites well. were easier for me as well. Okay. I think it just gets lost in the uh, fact of the scanning. Yeah. So is it? Yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's an impression, right? Okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's an easy thing. Um, and then the other question I had is. Everyone seems to have their own style in filling out the reports that are just like slightly different. Um, and so 
I was wondering if we could make it, uh, so for example, I think John fills out that blue section, like checks off boxes in the blue section, which is the good retail practices section, um, which I think it's is the usually one. the, okay. So only Okay. Oh. So it sort of seemed like sometimes some of the other ones could, I don't know, I guess I don't really know the code as well though. Um, and then the other thing is on that second page, um, he always writes the code, the actual code number, right? And then if it's non-critical or, or not, um, which I think would be useful. I, um, I do think usually the code number is written. Sometimes yeah, it's not, it's yeah, written. usually it's written. Yeah. Um, but can we just get like whether it's a non-critical or critical violation just because noted next to that, like a C or an NC? Just so I know exactly which one is what, because I, I, just because I don't know the code as well as, as you guys do. So I can match it up, particularly when you go to re-inspections, because I, yeah, you know. <laughs> that would be my only request. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, round table. So this is the first actual round table. I don't know if anyone had anything. I have a few things. Um, yeah, no, I have some notes from MAHB. So okay, yeah. We can do it. Then. We'll do that. Okay. So the um, few things that I have are that um, the Department of Public Health has been publishing a weekly report on um, vaping associated lung illnesses in the state, uh, which is really useful and interesting uh, because you can see for so they they detail cases by gender age and then product used um, and what they have been finding is that pretty consistently the numbers have held over the last month that 30 percent of cases report only using nicotine which is a higher number than what you see in the national numbers so i think that's just an important thing for people to be aware of and probably plays into why Governor Baker made the decision he made. Um, and along those lines, the Massachusetts legislature just voted to ban all flavored tobacco, including mint and menthol. Yeah, I heard that. So, um, and tax e-cigarettes, um, which so, sort of makes some of what I heard in the presentation yeah. now kind of like moot, but anyway, um, so we'll see. I don't think Baker has done any, has signed it yet. I think it was on the stats. Okay. Yeah, unless he signed it today. Yeah, I don't, I haven't heard anything. <laughs> yeah, so that's something to keep an eye on. Um, I know a lot of, there are a number of communities in Massachusetts that have been looking at the mint and menthol ban, so this may prevent us from even having to think about it. <laughs> so, um, and then the last thing was, I noticed there have now been two area restaurants, not Reading restaurants, but area restaurants that have had problems with the cleaning solution mixing. I don't know if, I don't know what the other one yeah. was. I can't remember. There I was a second the, one. I only know the one in Burn. Let's see, there's, it yeah, there, there was one in Burn. I can't remember which one it was. Yes, I think it was. Oh, I think it was in the Cummings area. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. You're right. So I don't know if, I mean. Occupational health kind of training. Yeah, or if, even if it should be just like a thing that gets mentioned when the inspector goes out or just 
So people know they shouldn't be mixing bleach and ammonia because that's what it is. I think in both cases, but, I'm not positive, but at least there, one case definitely. Is there any was. training that we require restaurants to vendors to do in that regard? Um, I thought it was one. I, one, one was. And they dropped something spilt into it. Uh, the, first one. The, the Burlington one I thought was bleach and ammonia. So there's what the news said. Yeah, of course, right. You're the one probably who knows. If that was different, then we, it didn't get reported again. Yeah, I don't know. But that's what the news said that reported anyways. I may be incorrect, but I thought one of them was they were Could be. doing I mean, something and the other one spilled into um, it. I don't think it was. I could be wrong. But right, it was an accidental mix. Yeah. Either way, but. Um, I can reach out to the fire department and see if they have any. Uh, oh, yeah. So yeah. It's something we have in the books that we require. Any kind of training. Yeah. Right? yeah. I know. Yeah, it's just because we don't require it, I wonder if they go through it though already. I, I, we have a list of emails, um, of, right, of all our vendors. It'd be interesting just to throw out an email say, you know, in light of recent events, is there something that you want to go with employees to understand um, use of chemicals on the property? Maybe they have a, maybe some of them, or at least the chains, maybe already have something in place that they do. It'd be interesting just to find out if they did it. It's like one of those things that people just forget and they don't really think about. Right. But it's just, you know, two accidents in a short right. period of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just, yeah, and you just don't want that to happen here. So. I feel like that, yeah. I feel like that's like OSHA related it, or something. Yeah, but I don't know if do to rest. I, yeah, I just don't know what I don't know the food do, retail industry has I mean, to, to go find out what they, what they through any of that. I haven't worked in one of the industries, so. I mean, I have that. I didn't work in a big chain, and I bet that chain restaurants are different from sort of. That's you know, probably true. In terms of training practices, yeah. but. I mean, it could be a good idea just to send out a reminder if you yeah. find like a data sheet or something that we can attach an email and say, as you're saying, in of recent events, just reminders about using chemicals. Or, I mean, I think we're within our authority to do that. I don't know if I can send out a data sheet. I'd have to know exactly what chemicals they were using. Yeah. I can send out something more generic that says, hey, do you have training? So at least know. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you read your labels. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was thinking just more of the training, not not necessarily pro saying exactly what product was used, mm -hmm. yeah. but if there's any training to make sure that there's Ask them if they have in-house training? Yeah, in, in relation to um, um, various hazardous, hazardous um, products that they use from a contamination standpoint. So ask them if they have in-house training and do we, need to, do we want to know what that training is or what the chemicals are or just ask them if they have their own in-house training? Yeah, if they want to share exactly what they do, sure. If they don't have any kind of training, you know, what kind of, um, what, what were your thoughts, Emmy, on, on, on what you were looking to do? We might not get a response from all these people. I know, I'm right. sure you <laughs> I'm sure you won't. <laughs> sure, sure. It doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm wondering if there are resources. Uh, I'm trying to look them up. Right now, but one of the talks I saw at MAHB was about preparing for climate change. Yeah. Said, you know, we don't have huge floods here necessarily, but if we have more storms, easy things, like typical things might happen where if your basement floods and there are chemicals that you use to clean, mm -hmm. those could get into water. And if they are carried anywhere else, they could be carried to like a playground. And so they provided a couple of websites that had information about preparing for how to store chemicals, how to, you know, in case mm -hmm. of climate change, but I wonder if they would have anything useful and I can look for it about just probably not chemical use in general. It's more well, about my, store. my thought would be could we simply um, make them store certain chemicals apart from one another? 
as part of our inspections. As part of the yes, but you'd have to know exactly what chemical. Right. Sure. I mean, we could ask what the state what, what chemicals, chemicals they know. use. Because there's a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It's not just mm -hmm. uh, would you say bleaching ammonia? Yeah. Because I know how many I, different I, things are there? You think combinations of things? I, I can't know, I, imagine you tasks with the way I clean so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're interested to look into though, see if we could do that. I think that would be a simple thing or from a storage standpoint. Or would we want to take an approach of pointing them to Just training resources? We can point them to training resources and specify that. A reminder that people need to read labels because the labels do tell you mm -hmm. typically what you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. um, they don't say you can't combine them. I think they, oh, do, I think they. No, I'm thinking of when I read instructions online. About yeah, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking some of them must come with an MSDS sheet. Does bleach usually come? Concentrated bleach usually come? I guess I don't know the answer to that. With a sheet? Yeah. That's separate from everything that's printed on the label. Yeah. No. Okay, well, maybe this is something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, you can. Well, we, ask can the we can ask the question. Yeah, question. So because if somebody comes back with something that's useful, you know. On the off chance somebody's like, yes, we do this program that's useful for us because. Right. Do you think one idea might resource. be to reach out to our colleagues in the communities where they're working? Yeah, problems? actually, that would be good. They may have already spent some time looking into this. That's true. Um, so the town of Burlington and the town of Woburn. Um, I know they went to the fire department, though. But it said the Board of Health or somebody yeah, from yeah. Health yeah. with Greg Robin, one of the reports, said that somebody from Health was there. So. If we started with the yeah. context that we have in those communities to see if they're being proactive and if they come up with something, yeah. maybe maybe that would save a little. Yeah. Bit of time. Certainly, yeah, it's great idea. Yep. Yep, that sounds good. Start there. Okay. Um, the next. I didn't have any other roundtable items. Um, the next thing was the MHB certificate program summary. And did you go to all of track two? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we both went to the same track oh. on different days. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so the the first. Um, uh, presentation was on food inspection staffing and it was given by Marcia Testa who's a biostats in, uh, instructor I believe at the Harvard TH Chan School of Public Health. She's also on the Wellesley Board of Health. Um, and in a nutshell, <laughs> she was saying that the 2013 food code requires um, a longer form and it's more complicated and more time consuming, which can mean an increase to necessary staffing levels. So there's an assessment in the Voluntary National oh, Retail Food Regulatory Program Standards, um, Standard 8, that has a workbook that you can go through and you sort of put in all the hours that you currently you know, do a lot for various tasks, permitting and all sorts of things to figure out what your staffing levels should be, what your optimal staffing levels should be. And she found for Wellesley, I think it was like a 30% increase just with the new food code over what their needs were prior to that. Did she say what the staff was before that? What was, what do you remember what our staffing level like was? Four people for all of Wellesley. It was. And they have a hundred and ninety establishments, I think. Okay. Yeah. And how much staff do they have? Maybe one point four 
which she said was drastically less than they needed. Um, so she so said it was doing enough. almost double the amount of inspections. So I, yeah, I haven't done the worksheet to see where that falls. Yeah, actually, but it seems like we're doing well in terms of. But I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. The they have half the inspections. No, this no, is the, the, the 2013 code. 190 the establishments. Yeah. So they have, right, we have 130? No, we're the 200. Oh, really? Oh, it depends how you want to uh, call uh, food establishments. Oh. Is it anybody that has a food permit or is it an actual? Oh. And I don't know what. That's where it gets. I don't know what a bigger number. It's okay. Not okay. temporary events. Yeah, the whole universe of okay. anyone that has a food permit. I don't know what number she used. <laughs> so. Yeah. But Wellesley is a slides. decent. Yes, I do have her. Wellesley's a decent size. So. Yeah. Three people. She said she needed a third people. Yeah, thirty percent increase. Like six people? Um, no, 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 percent of the 1.5, yeah, more, yeah, so 30 percent increase from 1.5 to, yeah, but she was making two separate points one was 1.4 is not nearly enough people, and another is food inspection. She used to take an hour, now it's like an hour and a half, okay, um, yeah. And I think, I can't remember what the 30% statistic was. There was something that was like, if she did the template that they're talking about, standard eight, the result was that they were 38% understaffed yeah, yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't remember I it's, what slide it's on. Uh, yeah, I know. There were. They might be right. Yeah, 33% increase in the amount of time for inspections. Thought the top of the bar. That's so probably what it was. The number. Oh no, maybe it was that one. That shows the yeah, number of the staff number of staff that she had. Yeah, one point four, and what they're looking for is two point seven. Okay, and you said they had one hundred and ninety. I totally missed that. I know. See, this is where <laughs> more than one person <laughs> goes so to the these things. <laughs> I thought I had it written down somewhere. Wellesley, 189 establishments, and, she thought and I said one inspector in 2018, so I don't know, but I was, maybe I was rounding. So she thought they needed two? Yeah. yeah. For one night. So it's just something to think about as we're moving forward in that direction. Did you have anything else on that one? can't remember I don't think so. she, she had some suggestions on how to pay for it and I don't know oh, if we even right. want to go there yet but so she wants two and a half inspectors for 100 and what? 189 establishments so two hundred and something plus on the temporaries I don't know yeah so five based on that and she wants 2.5 double what she has and we need double the inspection. I think she she's that. I mean, I could have, I just, this is a note I wrote down, so I could be wrong on the number, but. <laughs> and that's establishments, not, because we have, like you were saying, like 130 food permits, but that's. Change you. But that, well, doesn't so that include lives. all the schools and the gas dish? That's so everything. They all get inspected. So it all depends on how she did her number. Yeah, yeah. Right. and I don't I mean, know how she did, did her number. Yeah, yeah. Figure from yeah. right. If that's her yeah. total inspections per year, we're about double that. And if she's saying 2.5 people, that would mean that we'd need five people to cover her yeah. Okay. I mean, and we can do the actual yeah, template. A, we can fill in the template and do it. Yeah. 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 There's, but yeah. So, so the 130 is something different. The no, list of 130. Did you think there was a 130, or am I making that up? I thought. That the, um, the list. I just anyway. looked at the list. I I don't have the number off the top of my okay. head. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, but having the formula, yeah. But yeah, the, I mean, it's literally you just plug in. And out of those people also do the housing complaints, the overgrown vegetation. So she's right. No, that she, a separate person up there, two point five. That's a separate. So sh this is just hours for a full time equivalent. If all they do is food inspections, yeah. and so that's not the that setup that we have ours. here. Yeah. Um, and so I think within the formula, you can say, you know, our 
the health agent, for example, is available X hours per week to do food inspections, and then you know we have another person who's doing food inspections this many hours. So it's by hours per week rather than people. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Actually, she does have a slide here that has. Oh wait, no, this is maybe hours. Worse type of food inspection. Okay, so. Uh, da, 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 da. Routine inspections. Should they do ooh, actual fiscal year 18 routine inspections was 402. So that sounds like about 200. Yeah. But right, we know now where to find the template. Yeah, yeah, that was the point. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's really all I had on that one. Did Me you have too, anything? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next one that we went to is climate change and toxic hazards, mapping and planning for resilient communities. Um, and you were actually just sort of referencing this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seemed like they had a couple of good reference resources that I didn't know about. The Emergency Preparedness of Massachusetts Regional Division. Um, I think it's a website, but they also have an office that you can call and get information. I think they have like fact sheets and stuff that you can download. So it might be useful just to call and ask if there's information about something that would be related to Reading. The main thing I can think of is wetlands that we have so much of everywhere, and maybe there's a higher risk of flooding um, if storms increase. Um, so, I mean, I'm happy to call them and ask that. And the other one they recommended. There's healthandenvironment.org, which has, which has three webinars that seem to be really useful. They're called Before the Storm, During the Storm, and After the Storm that people can click on before and after. She said, during a storm, you're probably not going to have power. <laughs> um, so you might not be able to watch the webinar. But if we could, I don't know if we want to put them on the website, or I can take a look at them first. How about that? And then see if it seems like there's anything useful we want to either link to or just provide our own summary of. Um, so those are a couple resources and she also just talked about the importance of information gathering and kind of like if you emailing to find out what training practices people do regarding mixing chemicals. She was saying the more that you know what chemicals are being used the better prepared you can be because nobody else is really taking account of like I thought about there's a the gas station you know like right next to a food establishment or something if the gas station flooded and their chemicals got into the food um, establishment then maybe it's possible that you know people in both establishments would need to know test <laughs> and I don't know what they would be testing for maybe this is the perfect example of that would be when the uh, gas station on Main Street had right. schools go off doing the Dunkin' Donuts in there. Yeah. And when the answer system went off outside the gas station, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's the wrong thing. It was like, <laughs> yeah. I do remember that, and we don't have anybody with private wells, I don't think. We have no. some, yeah, well, we do. I'd actually well. ask, yeah. yeah. Uh, drinking. Because they said after oh, wow. possible. Not that not we don't have any drinking? drinking? Oh, okay. oh, okay. No, not drinking. Okay. A lot of irrigation wells. Irrigation, yeah. Okay. Yeah, another tool that someone had mentioned was, uh, it's called Oliver, um, and it's a mapping tool. You can um, highlight where all of the hazardous waste, uh, hazardous chemical storage and usage sites are, as well as um, landfills, whether they're lined, whether they're capped, um, which is sort of useful information if you are thinking about a flooding event, which is what we're probably more likely to get if we have some crazy weather issue. We're in a high flood zone? Um, we're not in a high flood zone, but we do have 
swamp the maps that highlight certain areas of town um, we do have a hazard mitigation plan mm -hmm. that might it's fairly recent in the last oh, okay. three or four years and we spent a lot of time on it um, like I think we spent a year drafting it and it came out of the planning division mm -hmm. might be worth taking a peek at that and see if maybe there's something in there to build off of yeah. or um, and then there's the climate committee too oh yeah yeah so it feels like there's probably some information yeah. out there and some things happening um, yeah because they were saying actually there I think there are a couple grant programs that um, you can apply if you have a particular project in mind you can apply for support for addressing these vulnerability concerns yeah. so and that was one of the reasons we crafted the plan so that we could be queued up for the grants. Oh, okay um, so yeah it might be worth taking a peek yeah so how do we do that I mean is it can we find it do should we ask these committees if they have other things in the works um, yeah. yeah I would say the Climate committee would be worth reaching out to if, yep. if it makes sense to the chair reach out to the climate committee chair. And I'm sorry, I don't know who that is, but I'm sure it's on the website. I'm sure it is, yeah. And I know a couple of people on the committee, but I just can't, I don't know who's the yep. chair. Um, the hazard mitigation plan. That's on the website. Oh, that one's on the services. website? Yeah. Okay. We have, I think, about 30 planning documents on our website. <laughs> okay. A lot of planning. Um, so yeah, that might be, that might be worth taking a peek at. Yeah, when I was looking, we don't have a lot of a hazardous waste producers here. I mean, we have storage with the GPW, but beyond that, we don't have a lot. But Woburn, right along that line, there's like dot, 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 yeah. <laughs> all the way up. So it's, you know, important to recognize that even if it's not within our physical bounds. Mm -hmm we could be impacted, so. Did you have anything else for that um, one? Yeah, I didn't really give a summary of the whole talk, but <laughs> sure the points I thought were really important. Cool. Yeah, so, oh, I did have uh, some recommendations from other towns were just things, which we may already have, the emergency type things like identifying cooling stations that are available 24-7 and have backup power may have something like that. Um, cooling station? Yeah, in case something happens. We have, I know, warming. Do you mean like... In like a summer. place in the in summer, the summer yeah. if people... Yeah, are, yeah we I'm usually sure you have plans. The street center. Right. It's a cooling center. Um, um, and it usually falls under the fire department to oh, kind of to incident this. command. Yeah. That's like with the boil water order. The fire chief was the incident command officer. Yeah. That's usually okay. We work closely with yeah. fire, um, and if we see weather, that's how we know that weather is happening and things are happening and storms or whatever. And then we collaborate, and the Pleasant Street Center is usually the place. In in a couple of cases, um, fire has been all queued up with um, cots and whatnot. If people needed to actually sleep at the Pleasant Street Center. Okay. And with the health department also, uh, time by time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. there's, like, got to be <laughs> plans for that. Yeah, yeah, but we always, I think almost always, it's fire, whoever health, or um, other yep. human services, we kind of will jump in together okay. and come up with a plan. Cool. Uh, okay. Uh, anything else on that one? No. Someone, a participant, recommended yeah. Needham's website as a good source for regular wording on regulations if we're looking for wording oh. about any regulations of climate or whatever. He said Needham. Good wording. <laughs> he wasn't from Needham, so. Okay. Um, okay. Oh yeah, well, the only other thing was they had mentioned trying to identify methods for alerting public in the event of limited or no comms. So that comms or no communication oh. comms. 
So and I don't the really power, know. Nope. Yeah. Well, Red Thing has like the emergency. We yeah. do have those. Like yeah. Like that's how I got. About the water. water. Yeah. I get it all, all the ways you can get it. Yeah. Good text, I get yeah. mobile phone, and my computer. I get it all different ways. And you can sign up. But you have that, yeah. yeah. But if, if somebody. It's an extreme situation, communication is tricky. Yeah. And, um, you know, fire, again, is really good at. They have the signage on the road. Yeah. They do, the yeah. Board. That's probably one of the best, uh, yeah. Like local media was on the news. It was, yeah. yeah. Everyone in Target knew that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, a lot of the restaurants called me directly on my cell phone. Yeah. 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 Um, the next. One was, oh, introduction of the revised legal handbook. This one kind of went all over the place in the one. Yes. I, okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. It was very entertaining. Yeah, it was. I, we probably heard two totally different talks, yeah. too, because it was kind of all over the place. He, you know, talked a bit about, uh, I was given by Mike Hugo, who's a lawyer and the VP of the executive board, I guess. Um, so he talked a little bit about noisome trades and said that if we ever have a hearing we should include DEP in that process because appeals go to DEP anyway so it's nice to have them involved from the beginning. I uh, talked a bit about site assignment saying that any new solid or hazardous waste facilities should get the uh, Board of Health approval. Uh, he talked a bit about the open meeting law changes that were made in 2017. Um, and actually, one thing that I don't, I'm not sure if we've been doing, um, is that we're apparently supposed to know when members come and go within the meeting minutes. So if somebody steps out early or comes in late, it has to be annotated in the minutes, which I did not know. But. <laughs> I didn't hear that part. <laughs> yeah, see, I think we heard two totally different. I knew it as I was sitting there. I was like, she, yeah, this is probably different every time anyone hears it. Um, and then he, t I don't know why, I can't remember how this got <laughs> brought up the cell tower safety. I think it was site assignment. Oh, that was the site was assignment. About okay. The site for the school and the general have chemical or whatever. Oh. And then the power okay. that you have. So he, the next thing he talked about was cell phone tower yeah. risk um, from being too close to a cell phone tower. Yeah. And um, he gave a, a little bit about some current research there, and apparently the is Congress debating about whether or not to open it up so that researchers can study effects of wireless communication. Oh, I didn't hear that part. But long but yeah. it was interesting. <laughs> but long story short, when it comes to Board of Health, is that the authority or the power that you have if they're trying to locate a cell phone tower in your town is that you might want to recommend that it be 1,500 feet away from any schools or places where children are or residences. Um, I think we have that in zoning. Oh, do we have it yeah. in zoning? Yeah, we do. We, have, we cover cell tower under zoning, and then we have a small cell um, set of design guidelines outside of zoning. Okay. I th Yeah, he talked about zoning and um, planning because he said authority, Board of Health Authority overrides pl planning committee, but not the zoning committee. <laughs> so it's good that zoning is already aware of the cell phone tower yeah. location. Yeah, we have a fancy name for it that I'm not going to be able to remember, but we, we did a presentation at the town meeting say five years ago on we had some language but on you know updating it great fairly recent great I think when we did it in 2015 2014 I think we had that in there yeah, that'd be five years ago. the only other thing I had about open meeting law was that the posting now the official side of the posting is on the website and not in front of the clerk's office so she said you can still have a piece of paper next to the clerk's office but that's no longer the official posting mm. and
and that um, if it can't be posted within 48 hours, like if your internet goes down or something, then you do have to postpone the meeting. But you have to show that the town clerk acted quickly and would figure how to make the posting available. <laughs> How do you? <laughs> okay. Document her call to IT right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the quickly and bigger. Yep. Oh, and sorry. And any notes, pictures, etc., passed around and discussed in a meeting must be provided and made publicly available. So she even yeah. mentioned right. like running out at that time to make a copy. Um, yeah. Right. It's passed yeah. around. The only other thing I had for cell tower safety was that he said that Senator Markey is actually in the process of trying to get Board of Health, Boards of Health, the right to approve the placement of towers. But I don't know where it is in that process. Um, okay, that one was all <laughs> over the place. So, um, and then the last one was all things considered vaping, menthol opposition tactics, cannabis, and CBD, current status. And that was by Cheryl Sparra. Um, she's the attorney for the MAHB. Uh, and some of this is maybe going to be moot if the, if, right. you know, okay. Governor Baker passes. So I don't, I don't really have necessarily a whole lot to say on this. Um, but she gave a bunch of options for either strengthening tobacco regulations, one is removing the menthol and mint except, uh, exemption. Um, another one, which I think our definition of tobacco product is actually pretty broad right now, but um, she said you can broaden it to specify nicotine, electronic cigarettes, liquid nicotine, and e-liquids. I think ours is pretty broad. And then um, capping permits, and there are lots of different methods for capping permits. Um, and then for new regulation options, restricting the sale of all flavored tobacco products to adult-only retail tobacco stores or restricting the sale of all tobacco products to adult-only retail tobacco stores. Um, there are 165 cities and towns that in Massachusetts that restrict flavored tobacco uh, except menthol, mint, and wintergreen to adult-only retail tobacco stores. Um, and 17 towns and cities have removed the flavor exemptions. Uh, there are lots of lawsuits. <laughs> um, and uh, the towns so far are not paying for them. Um, but it looks like the towns are winning Win. yeah. at this point. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know if there was an update. She had said that in November uh, that motions to dismiss have been filed by muni the municipalities, and I think they were hearing that in November, but I don't know if there was any update. Okay. So if the governor signs this bill, mm -hmm. And that you know trumps our regulation. Do we leave our regulation as oh, is on yeah, good question. the website, or do we change something to say refer to whatever the state's authority says? Or is that a legal question? That's a legal it's question. Yeah. Um, Typically, it usually does refer. Okay. Yeah. So we would edit whatever needs to be edited here. No. Okay. Yeah, I can follow up with town council. Okay, great. I'm working with them on the pesticides. Right. Too, so. Great. Thanks. Uh, and then I didn't quite didn't write anything down for CBD actually. Um, the CBD thing is kind of a, a work in progress, it seems, and a bit of a mess as to how it's being regulated. <laughs> Her conclusion was like. We don't know, but right now you don't have to have a license to sell CBD products, but yeah. it's not really specified. Right. It's, <laughs> it's Nobody has claimed ownership over it, is right. what it seems. 
So, uh, okay. Anything else you wanted to share from that? Okay. Uh, the next thing is this general bylaw article discussion. Um, so this is about, this was sent out by the town clerk. Um, and apparently the, I guess this is the bylaw committee wanted to get feedback from boards on uh, how they felt about basically making it so that uh, non-resident, uh, wh about whether non-residents should be allowed to serve as members of the board. Mm -hmm. And if so, under what circumstances. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting one, probably for a lot of people it's, more boards than I was. Um, I can't, uh, Board of Health would need a non-resident. It seems like they're looking to go into specific um, cases. I know, it really does seem I, like it. I was trying to think of like what the potential benefit might be if there I mean, was one. I guess if you don't have enough people who are volunteering. That's true. Right, if you went into a situation where you don't have a full board, that would be problematic right for certain boards anyway well, most boards I would think that would be problematic but I don't know if that that ever happens right <laughs> so not too much not too often I mean, <laughs> yeah I mean it's, it's always shifting um, just because we have so many boards in my department so yeah, people, you know, are on, come on, leave, new people come on. And I don't think it's been a major problem. Yeah. What I understood this to be a consequence of is someone that was involved in the community that didn't live in the community that wanted to participate oh. and came that way as opposed to let's reach out to the universe and get more people to be on our boards. I think somebody was already in the community in some capacity, didn't live here, and oh. wanted to have a voice on something. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it came from. <laughs> It's tricky. Yeah, I know. I can see value in a temporary member from outside the community when you're short staff, not that it's a staff position. Yeah. But then you also don't want to give a lot of weight. Influence. Yeah. yeah. But you don't want to get voting. Yeah, maybe Over that's the big thing. Is associate. You, you can right. see there's a, a lot of call for an associate yep. um, committee member in that capacity. Again, it's probably good among boards that could probably benefit from it um, to a certain degree, I guess. But it'd be tough to give a voting. Yeah, I sort interest. of feel the same. The, 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 yeah. the people I think that would be you know, most interested would be folks that have um, you know, either own real estate in this town, mm -hmm. rental units in this town, yeah. um, businesses, businesses. In this, business owners in this town. Yeah. Um, stuff like that where you know they're, they're involved in the community, but mm -hmm. they don't live in the community. Right. And then it gets tricky. Mm -hmm. What boards and committees would be on a restaurant owner, no offense, <laughs> be on this board as a board member for obvious reasons. Yeah. I mean, they, they'd be walking out of the room yeah. half the time saying, oh, I can't participate in this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, you right, know, so right. It's, it's very, it's, it's kind of tricky. I, I think um, if they had specific reasons, I mean, a few, I, I could see it makes sense on a few different boards for very specific reasons, but boy, I mean, it's 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 tough to be like spot zoning, you know, <laughs> trying to come up with those specific reasons for each particular yeah, board that yeah. would be allowable would be a nightmare. I know. So is it easier to just have a blanket like mm -hmm. opinion one way or another? Right. I think my blanket seems opinion is. Could be okay if they're not a voting member. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. As an associate. Yeah. I mean, all of our 
meetings are public. Anybody can Right, come. exactly. We had all the restaurant yeah. folks yeah. come. They, didn't, yeah. they don't live, they, but their right. voice was heard. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So there is a component of it baked into the yeah. public yeah. process. That's true. So first question I always have in anything like this, who else has done it? Right. Can't, you know, someone else has already invented the wheel, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, and I think if you had some examples of where it could be beneficial, I mean, we could sit here and imagine different things, <laughs> but right. I'm, sure, I'm sure it could be beneficial. It's just, it's really hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Benefits outweigh the complications. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel that I've worked in local government my whole career, and Reading is a very open and engaging community. I don't think there's any dispute that there's lots of meetings and lots of participation. And a lot of the things that we do in my department, you know, we just had an ice cream social a couple of months ago and try to get people out with different ideas. And I didn't know a lot of people were from outside. They weren't Reading residents. Okay, come on in. You know, so, you know, where can you go and get a free ice cream? <laughs> So I think we are engaging. I think we are open. Uh, I'm sure it could always be better, but I don't think we have a problem somewhere that we're trying to fix with this. I think it's maybe a, a, a philosophical question more than anything, right? So they're looking for some. Feedback. They're looking for feedback. Yeah. I like Kevin's good answer. So you also done it first. <laughs> Report back to us as to how it works. That'd be We'd be interested feedback. in understanding more about what type of model this could follow. Yeah. Again, mm -hmm. okay, never try, never try to invent the wheel first. No, Someone else I agree. Did it for you. I agree. More, more information needed. Absolutely. I it, just think it's hard to respond to this. It, it I mean, this one. I mean, we can. Sorry, go ahead. No, uh, I, I mean it, we can say that, but and we can also say that you know we seem we seem to be in agreement that we're not yeah, enthusiastic we're about having a, right. a voting member. So we have narrowed it down that far, and then yeah, and we'd be interested in the, feedback from other towns yeah. and cities that have done it. Yeah, be interested to see what what they liked, what they didn't yeah. like about it too. That's always the best part about that. You can stop a lot of errors on your behalf because someone else already mm -hmm. did them. And you know, if you're going to do anything, at least you come out of the, out of the gate with a better product. All right. Same style. Uh, pesticide regulations update. Uh, it's been sent to town council. And we're waiting. <laughs> uh, I did send off that copy as well to uh, Andy and Anne to have them at least just give that update <laughs> to the select board with um, and responses to their questions that they had posed in the, um, from the previous meeting, just so they know where our heads were at at this point, and hopefully that'll streamline the rest of the process. But you never know what you're going to get back from town council, I suppose. So. <laughs> this has not been as streamlined. <laughs> I know, no, I know. I had to write like in 2017, and I was like, oh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, review minutes from October twenty second. Did anyone have any issues? No. I did not as well. Um, so uh, I guess I'll move to accept the minutes from October twenty second, two thousand nineteen. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? 3-0, motion passes. And do we have a motion to adjourn? Anyone, or does anyone have anything else? You, December 17th, 7 p.m. Oh, December 17th, 7 p.m. Okay, I have that. Tuesday? Yep. Yeah. Tuesday, December 17th, 7 p.m.
Right. We're always on Tuesday. Right, right, right. We were just talking about this. Yeah. So I have on the schedule already. Yeah. <laughs> Does it work for everybody? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Do we have anything for the following? We can talk about it at the next meeting, but I, I don't don't have anything written down for 2020. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. <laughs> uh, a schedule? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That would be helpful. You might book the rooms while you're drafting that. Tuesdays can be busy. Do you think that means we might not want to meet on Tuesday? Or no, it's fine. It's just, um, it's never a bad idea to book the room. We can always, you know, decide later if that's not going to work. Okay. There are plenty of options. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? We do, actually. <laughs> Oh, we do? So do we have a second? Second. <laughs> All those in favor? 3-0. Meeting right. adjourned. Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah.